Hello guys and welcome back to another video and today I will be creating an alternate history scenario using ChatGPT. So if everyone else is doing it, let's go ahead and see what it gives me. So I'm going to ask it to create me an alternate history scenario starting in the modern day and let's see what it comes up with. Alright, presidential election is contested in multiple states. Through fraud regularly, the legal battles drag on for months. A uh, decision sparks massive protests and civil unrest. Declares a state of emergency and develops a military to que quell the protests. Okay, the American military is stopping protesters. Country plunges into a second civil war. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, I guess we're starting an American civil war here. Not the um, first thing I imagined we'd be doing, but guess that is what we're going to be doing here. The American 2020 election has just resulted in, in the second American Civil War. And for the record, I am not making this. This is completely up to AI. So, <coughs> yeah. The 2020 election has now led to civil war in the United States. And different countries are backing different sides. So let's go and color in the United States. And we can see how this ends up. Because that's probably going to change a lot lot in the future. Whoever wins the Civil War will automatically be turned into one of the best powers, and for some reason Russia and China are supporting opposite sides. So whoever wins is going to give one of those two powers a massive boost as well for to thank them for helping them. Although this is going to maybe not completely cripple, but definitely at minimum weaken the United States and their global stance, how it's going to be after the Civil War is completely over and dealt with. This will most likely put them away from the number one spot. If the Chinese side wins, then China will take it. And if the Russian side wins, then Russia will take that number one spot. Honestly, eventually, China is going to take it anyway. So let's go ahead and start this, these protests right over here near Washington. Uh, does it tell me where it starts? Um, okay, China's backing the rebels. In the midst of the chaos, revolutionary technology that allows them to travel back in time. All right, let's take one thing at a time. We see rebels popping up in the U.S., so we're going to be starting one over here in Illinois and more in the heartland near the Great Lakes. One down the, uh, down the east coast, down here in the south. For the record, it doesn't tell me where it's starting doesn't even mention if it's because of political parties, political unrest. So I'm just going to color in random areas because it doesn't tell me what else to do. It just tells me put them in a civil war. California is going to rebel. We're going to see California and Texas work together to rebel. So yeah, this is going to be a large, large civil war. Mass variant in the center is going to fall into civil war because the U.S. doesn't bother protecting it. And in the midst of the chaos, this is their words, a group of scientists develops a revolutionary technology that allows the people to travel back in time. A team is sent back to the early 1900s with a mission to prevent the events that led to the Civil War from occurring. They alter key moments in history, and when they return to the present day, they find a very different world. The U.S. is a much more peaceful and prosperous nation, and the international community looks like it's a beacon of hope and stability. However, there are unintended consequences to their actions. The changes they made in the past have created new problems in the present. The team must navigate this new reality and find a way to solve the problems they inadvertently created while maintaining the peace they fought so hard to achieve. Okay. <clears throat> Well, that means that this entire civil war was just ended through going back in time. Interesting. Uh, let's ask it to keep going. Uh, there we go. Keep it going. Keep it going. All right. As the team grapples with the unintended consequences of their actions, they discover their, that their alterations to the timeline have caused a butterfly tr effect, rippling out in unexpected ways. In this new timeline, certain technologies never emerged. Certain, move, certain movements never gained traction, and certain people never rose to power. Historian has that the ultimate has significant implications for the world's political landscape. 
have inadvertently led to a power vacuum in certain regions, allowing authoritarian regimes to rise unopposed. The team must now work to prevent these regimes from gaining too much power and threatening the stability of the war of the world. Back in the US, the alternate timeline has led to a new set of problems. By preventing the civil war, they have a whole different bunch of political and social tensions. They discover their alterations to the past have left the world where certain injustices and inequalities persist in new forms. Okay, a lot less more than I was hoping for, but let's keep going. Team realizes they cannot simply undo their alterations and return to the original timeline. They must instead work to address the new problems that have arisen in this altered world. They begin to develop new technologies and ideas to address the new challenges facing humanity. In the end, the team realizes history is complex and delicate web of cause and effect. Even the smallest change can have significant far-reaching consequences. They vow to continue the work. Okay, that entire alternate history part? Yeah. Yeah, that, that doesn't matter at all. Okay, we're back here. U.S. Civil War. Let's... Okay, uh, let me ask it this then. Who won the Civil War? The, the Second Civil War. Civil War. Alright, let's see what it tells me. It says it's Jenning. Ah, there we go. Wow. It doesn't know. I'll just ask it to keep going. Come on. Give me more stuff than this. Would have been highly unpredictable. Uh, they have lasted several years with both sides suffering significant casualties and enduring immense economic and social damage. Stalemate could have emerged with neither side able to gain a decisive advantage and have resulted in long-term division to the country with a permanent split between the two opposing factors. Uh, alternatively, one side may have returned, uh, either due to superior military strength or the support of powerful foreign allies. A new government, but at a great cost in terms of human life and political stability, regardless of the outcome, uh, would have left a lasting impact on the country and its people. Okay, the USA just got divided. So we're going to color it all in one color and divide it up. It doesn't say how it's divided, so I'm going to cut it. May not look like in half, but considering east versus west and all the mountains and whatnot, this is gonna be about half. This is not using state borders, by the way. This is just me drawing a random line because I doubt the Civil War would have followed perfect state borders. I assume it would have moved everywhere. So now we have this new border in the United States. The number one world power in the world is now gone, and both Russia and China now have, maybe not puppet, but supportive regimes in North America. This is going to be the Pacific US, aka West US, the Western States of America, and the Eastern States of America, fighting it out to gain full control of the, Amer of the U old United States. Okay, let's ask it, what else is happening in the world? What else is happening in the world? All right, what's happening? Come on, chat GPT. Second Civil War in the US would have had significant implications. The world's most powerful nation would have been consumed by internal conflict, power vacuum. A uh, rise of new regional powers as countries seek to fill the void left by the United States. Russia and China in particular could have taken advantage of the Soviet situation to expand their influence in regions like Eastern Europe and Asia. Economy is severe, severely impacted uh, and a global recession or even a depression. Climate change, terrorism, and cybersecurity threats would still continue to pose significant challenges to the world. The altered timeline could have led to different approaches and outcomes. Overall, the Second Civil War in the U.S. would have had far-reaching consequences on the world stage, and its impact would have been felt for decades to come. Let's go ahead and do what it said there about Russia and China expanding their influence. Looks like these guys like the East, huh? Don't know what they're doing there, but first up, China. We have to have them increasing their influence. Without the U.S., a lot of Europe and a bit of Eastern Asia is now gone. How is this going to work out? 
Well, Russia's gonna have a very fun time. Without any US support, they managed to defeat Ukraine, they annexed Belarus, and they're practically just trying to tell China, shut up, I'm the world power, not you. And China's of course gonna fight this as they have a larger economy and a much larger population. But for now, there's nothing they can do. Russia is expanding heavily into old Soviet territories, although NATO does still exist and they do not feel fully ready to declare war. Even without the USA, it is still a fairly powerful alliance, consisting of a lot of Europe. This may even expand into more of a global alliance, which I know I'm making a lot up here, but ChatGPT is giving me too vague of answers. Okay, Russia, I'm giving you a lot of your old land back. Uh, don't ask me why you need so much land. You're already the largest country in the world. Uh, but hey, I'm going to ask it what happens after this. As soon as I clean this up, expand China and Russia, since that's what the AI told me to do. So that is what I am going to do. Yeah, Russia and China both having a very fun time here. Russia's influence now stretches into Eastern Europe. Also, sorry if you hear the wind in the background. But sadly for me, humankind can't yet control the weather. So there's not much I can do about that. As for China, well, I don't know if they would expand too much in real life, but you know what? The AI told me to expand them, so I'm going to expand them. They are going to get all of Mongolia, making them a bit of a larger country, but not a lot of people there. They also invade and annex Taiwan. Japan would most likely join in, but what could they really do without the United States to help them? All right, let's ask them what happens after this. What? Oh, also, China increased their influence in Southeast Asia a lot. Vietnam and Thailand, who had been resisting China, Chinese influence, especially Vietnam, are now giving that up, and China has full control of just all of Southeast Asia, including some of the disputed waters around here in the South China Sea along with over here in the Yellow Sea, just etc. The Chinese Navy is now, with this new expansion, the largest and most powerful in the world. In real life, it's the largest, but not the most powerful. Here, it is both. All right, what happens next, ChatGPT? What happens next? Tell me. Uh, face a daunting task to rebuild and reunify the country or would have left deep scars on the American society with social, political divisions that could make a great, take generations to heal. The new government would have to work hard to address the root of the conflict. Um, you know, the global pounds of power would have shifted. The rise of new regional powers and a weakened the United States, the country's influence on the world stage would have diminished. And it would have to find new ways to assert itself as a global leader. The Ultra Timeline could also have new opportunities and innovations. A team of scientists who traveled back in time could have introduced new technologies or ideas that could have led to breakthroughs in areas like renewable energy, medicine, or artificial intelligence. The future of this alternate world would have been shaped by the actions and decisions of people living in it. Wow. Just have to keep going big, huh? Well, it told me to make some regional power, so we're going to make a new European Union. That's right. I'm turning into any one of those alternate history people. But you know what? ChatGPT told me to make a regional power. I'm going to make a regional power. If anything, this is already world power, which is why I'm not going to make it any larger. Although it definitely could be. From there, let's go ahead and make a new Nordic Union. Once again, got to make those regional powers. And the Nordic Union is a fairly popular one, although mm, maybe not the best. We need more regional powers. South America. South. Yeah, South America. Do you have a regional power? Yeah, Brazil. Eh, fair enough. Brazil's your regional power. They're going to get to expand. They're going to annex Guyana and Suriname to assert themselves as even more of a regional power. English, Dutch. But they don't care. They just say it's mine now. Uh, from there, they might continue to expand, but since they're already a regional power, I don't really have to. North America, with the U.S. divided, the eastern half would probably still be the most influential, but Canada and Mexico would have grown a lot as well. So let's increase both of their strength. Mexico is going to go down into Central America and capture the entirety of the Caribbean. Because let's be honest, let them get some of it. Okay, the U.S. is always overshadowing them, and nobody's ever talking about them. Still a nice place to go on a vacation, I'd suggest over here in Yucatan near Merida. 
Merida, but that is a completely different story. For now, they are expanding militarily down into Central America and once again into the Caribbean. As for Canada, their expansion is going to consist of the annexation of Alaska. Since the Civil War, they backed the side that controlled it, and since they continue to control it, Canada now is able to kind of half buy, half just influence them into giving it to them. That's great for how large they are. They also go ahead and buy Greenland and annex Iceland to form the North, North American Union. It can't be the North because it doesn't hold all of North America, but you know what? It is still fairly large. We need more regional powers, more regional powers. Uh, Africa, you need a regional power. South Africa is going to be your southern regional power. And Nigeria is going to be your western regional power, with Egypt being your northern regional power. This world is already kind of cursed, but maybe it could happen. That whole time travel thing just didn't really work with it. Um, with it having the issues with them just coming back and it all being a waste of time, yeah, kind of annoying. But you know what? That's fine. Egypt, our northern power. All right, let's form the north, uh, the North Islamic State. Perfect, perfect, exactly. That is perfect. They unite with Sudan, another fairly powerful country. Libya, decent northern power, and Sudan and Chad. Well, we all know about Chad, right? So yeah, that's a powerhouse on the world stage, not even just African. Very powerful. And as I said, Nigeria is going to expand it well at, into a regional power, as that is what ChatGPT has told me to do. They're going to next all of Niger. They're going to get all of Benin, all of Togo, all of Ghana, and all of Burkina Faso. Pretty good for them. Definitely expand it. Uh, yeah, that is a regional power right there. Very powerful regional power. So now Africa has three of them. A western one, a northern one, and a southern one. What's left? Maybe a central one, but the DRC couldn't fill it. Angola doesn't have enough land to expand. And Ethiopia would much more be an eastern one. So now ChatGPT is saying that it doesn't know what to do from here, but let's go ahead and ask it once more and see if it can give me any more information. Let's ask any wars during this time. Hopefully there's at least one. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the whole point of it, but let's see if they give me a war. All right, ChatGPT, were there any wars during this time? Generate me something good. It's possible that other conflicts could have arisen during the time period in the alternate history scenario, depending on the geopolitical landscape. Oh, uh, is it actually going to give me anything good? Okay, no, let's ask it to give me a war. Because I need something to do. There's a new war in the Middle East. A second civil... Alright, I got my thing. I got my thing. A Middle Eastern war is the next war that we have to deal with here because that is what Chap GPT has commanded me to do. What is this war going to look like? Well, it's going to be like any other Middle Eastern war. Turkey, Israel, and Saudi Arabia, along with the UAE, Oman, as soon as I can color them in. Also, this is going to be the last event of this alternate history. If you want to see a part two, I'm all for it. Just let me know in the comment section so I know that you actually want it and that you'll actually watch it. So this is going to be our red team versus our blue team of Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Iraq, Iran, and Armenia. Also Azerbaijan joins the red team and Yemen joins the blue team. This is pretty much the standard Middle Eastern War scenario, but they didn't give me the sides. So we're just going to assume that this is how it's going to end up. Greece might join in, this uh, North African Islamic State might join in, but for now this is going to be our war because I also don't want to make this video too long. Once again, part two, possible. New series for 600 subs, possible. Getting closer to the bigger milestones, but let's go ahead and continue. Hopefully this video does well. I think it's a good video, but let's go ahead and see what you guys think. From there, yeah, Saudi Arabia and Oman, they're going to obliterate Yemen. Yemen, they're already crushed in real life one of the worst places to live at least if you ask me or probably anyone living there 
From there, Turkey goes on an honorable campaign of destroying Armenia and ravaging Syrian lands that are already ravaged. Can you ravage ravaged lands? Hmm, bit of a tongue twister there. But now Israel's pushing into Lebanon and Saudi Arabia's pushing into Iraq. Is the blue team gonna do anything here? Yeah, they're gonna push down to Kuwait. And then almost instantly after, the red team is going to push them back. What else is gonna change here? Well, they said something uh, including the Americans could happen. So we're gonna have America joining in. So clearly here we have the US and the USA basically states Middle East equals oil, oil equals good. And the Eastern states of America are gonna join in. Okay, first of all, that is gonna make this war incredibly one-sided, but what's gonna change that? Well, the fact that the Western states of America want their revenge. And if you're wondering why I did this, it's because the AI also told me that there was a chance for a third American Civil War, including these two powers that arose from it. Let's go ahead and map that out. Well, the East was fully ready for this, whilst the West was not, and they began to push out, especially into these non-important parts that the West had nothing in, absolutely nothing. From there, they began to push into the South, and at this point, neither side wants to fight this war, so they just set up a front line, and they're just gonna be killing people until the war ends. And then the blue team, who was already very down on hope, on morale, is just getting even lower as Syria is wiped out, and Iraq is about to be, with its major rivers gone, and only Iran left. Now, Iran, what are they gonna do? They're gonna fight to the death, okay? Saudi Arabia may have captured a lot of their oil. <clears throat> Definitely not American troops or anything. <clears throat> Definitely not going for the oil. But they have some they have some good defensible terrain around here, a lot of mountains. They can most likely hold the front. So the red team is gonna focus on two main campaigns. One here in the south along the Iranian coast, mainly led by the Arabian countries, and one up here in the north, mainly led by Israel, Turkey, and Azerbaijan. Uh, the northern team captures Tehran, the capital, whilst the southern team captures all of the coastline and the border with Pakistan, who's providing them some aid in return for mine and territorial expansion. From there, even some Iranian people are starting to support the red team and Iran having no hope. Once again, they do not surrender, they capitulate. There is a difference. Let's go and draw this in, and then I can show you how the American Civil War is going. Mm, first things first, Saudi Arabia would definitely gain from this. Into Yemen, which I don't even know if I want to call a gain because that is not very stable land by any means. We then see Israel taking over all of Palestine, recognized by even some of these, like Saudi Arabia and Oman, while Saudi Arabia also follows up by taking a good amount of land out of southern Iraq. Once again, very nice amount of land. Kuwait decides oil, oil is mine, and sets up the Confederation of the Oil right over here. Uh, yeah, USA definitely didn't influence that name. From there, Jordan's gonna gain some of southern Syria, some lands out of Iraq, but they didn't really do much, so they don't really get much. As for Turkey, well, Turkey's, Turkey did much, so Turkey gonna get much. They were one of the main participants in this war, and they are going to be given what that entitles them. Or what Turkey thinks Turkey should get. Which one a country is deciding what it should get, it normally gives itself a lot. This case will be no different as Turkey annexes a lot of land out of Iran and Azerbaijan and Armenia, my bad. Have fun, have fun controlling that. Uh, there might be a second Syrian civil war, except this time under Turkey. Yeah, have fun with that. Azerbaijan's gonna take a lot of Northern Iran. A lot of Azerbaijanis there. Probably still gonna be a lot of resistance, but Iran, you've lost a lot here. There's not much you can do. You will be given the rest of Iraq, though, as it is considered too weak to exist as a state. And this I new Iranian government is maybe not made into a full-on puppet government, but is definitely being influenced by just all of the victors of this war. Also, yeah, we're going to be having... Yeah, the West is going to surrender. It doesn't actually surrender... But I'll show you what the peace treaty looks like soon. As soon enough, other powers are considering getting involved and they really just didn't want to continue it. Small lands will be ceded to each side. 
and this video will be over. Once again, you want to see a part two? I'm going to save this. I'm going to save the uh, talk I was having with the AI. Kind of creeps me out how good it is. You can ask it almost anything, but uh, it's still very cool. Very cool. Can't wait until the day where we can just have in, like some earpiece and we can ask any question in the world and some AI will answer it. Yeah, humanity has a bright future, guys, okay? Don't let nuclear bombs tell you otherwise. This world is just, yeah, this world's not doing great, but hey, hey, the world, the AI never said anything about the world blowing itself up, so maybe we do have a chance, okay? Maybe we do. Well, Turkey here specifically, growing a lot. Turkey is now arguably the largest Middle Eastern power, as long as you don't count the North Confederacy of Islamic States, I don't know what I called it, something like that. Also, this was destroyed. I probably had it in the wrong mode for a second, but there we go. Uh, close enough. That that looks normal, right? That that does not look normal. It's fine because once I finish this video, will be over, and nobody will ever see that again. What what will they see? A big boy Azerbaijan, probably doubling, if not well, definitely doubling in size, if not more, connecting to their exclave and just turning themselves into. Okay, yeah, they're surrounded by Turkey and Russia. They're not doing that great. But they're alive. The Alliance of the European Union. Well, that also expands. I'll show you that in a second because of one last command I got from ChatGPT. So, yeah, definitely an interesting concept. Definitely an interesting concept. But I think it should be about all the borders in the Middle East. Then let's actually go ahead and draw in the borders in the U.S., and there's gonna be like two changes and that is just the change of the border a bit more out over here and a few minor territorial concessions in the south yes that is all that changes uh, li literally nothing else changes this border is nearly the same although you could say that the victor was the eastern states as they were the ones who gained land all across the border some of it not very important, but hey, land is land, land is land, and the eastern states are planning to just slowly but surely cripple the west until eventually they can reintegrate them to once again form up the United States of America. They might even unite with Canada back here to form the North American Federation, or the United States of North America. If that happened, well, that would be cool, but sadly I can't do anything without the AI telling me to. So, once again, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video, and let me know if you want to see part two. I'll see you all next time. Bye.